President Uhuru Kenyatta is at the moment attending a meeting organized by the Kenya Private Sector Alliance to discuss next year's general election. The forum brings together various leaders from the legislature, executive and the judiciary to discuss ways of attaining peaceful elections next year. Those attending the meeting accused the opposition of boycotting the event. Let's now cross over to Kwale County where the event is ongoing. Putting and will continue encouraging because we don't want to leave any Kenyan behind. We want to carry all Kenyans together so that elections do not become a determining factor in terms of a level of competitiveness. That elections come and go, our country remains stable. That elections become an event for the Kenyans to decide whose turn is it to assume office. Sometimes they will give you this time, sometimes they might deny you, but we remain Kenyans. So thank you very much. May God bless Kenya. Thank you, Speaker. And now I'd like to welcome the other partner, and this is the National Assembly, led by Honorable Justin Muturi, the Speaker of the Kenya National Assembly, to also give his remarks and invite His Excellency. Thank you, Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of the Kenyan Defense Forces, Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta, my brother, the Speaker of the Senate, who I think many Kenyans may not know is a Christian because you don't know his Christian name, but uh, for avoidance of doubt, David Ekweduro. <laughs> Justice uh, Sagan Bogoli, representing the judiciary, the leadership of uh, KEPSA, the cabinet, the donor community here present, all colleagues who spent uh, 13 hours yesterday here in very, what I can describe as very unmitted uh, debates, but essential for the country. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me pleasure to stand before you to do a very simple job, to tell you thank you very much. I think the gist of what we discussed yesterday has been very ably captured in the report uh, read out to us by Nick Nesbitt. And I think it's only fair that uh, I also, like uh, my good brother, Governor Mvulia, say here before you, that I have signed the pledge. I pledge to commit to peaceful elections, election, election period, and the period after. <laughs> With KEPSA, we as parliament have uh, had this conversation, but I think it cannot have been better, been better than this to have so many stakeholders participate and speak to one another like happened in this forum yesterday into today. Like I said yesterday, Your Excellency, between 8th and 9th of June, 2012, 
KEPSA working together again with Parliament held a similar summit, leadership summit here in the face of the then impending elections of 2013. And if uh, all of you have your folders, if you open uh, the folder, the, the document titled Inspiring a New Era at page 11, you will see a photograph of the participants then. And you will notice that uh, it was then the national executive has then comprised. It's only that it's unfortunate you can't see what was on the background, but I can confirm. At that time, I was not serving as a member of parliament, but I was at this podium speaking as the chair, then chair, of the Center for Multiparty Democracy, popularly known as CMD. The pledge then signed was about uh, national cohesion. I'm sure my good friend and my tutor, the Honorable Xavier Francis Ole Caparo, would be delighted to know that to note that at that time the pledge was com to commit to national cohesion and peace during the period leading up to and after the elections. If it was then right, it must be right even today. So ladies and gentlemen, I just want, I just want to say that we are here to do a noble job and it is important that at the national leadership, we assure Kenyans that elections must never and should not tear the country apart. As my brother Ekweviru has just said, they will come and the, the Kenyans will exercise their democratic uh, and constitutional mandate. we must give assurance to the citizenry of this country that what will happen is not new, as always happened for the longest period many of us would remember. Your Excellency, I don't want to say how old some of us may be, but uh, we know when you have uh, old people like the Honorable Sakaja, you, you run the risk of uh, of uh, <laughs> disclosing your age. But we have held elections. And in all this, this period since 1963, we have been trying to improve our democracy. We appreciate that even it's in its purest form, it is never perfect. But all others are much worse echoing the ones of uh, Winston Churchill. But we too have been improving our democracy. This summit must be seen in that light, that we are committed to improving our democracy. And it is not possible, it cannot be possible for us to do that in the absence of peace. Forget about saying it credible, transparent. It cannot. If there's no peace, all those others uh, will not, uh, they, it's not possible. They will not happen. And therefore, a commitment to peace by ourselves is, in my view, the greatest service at this moment we can give to this country. Your Excellency, with those few remarks, it's now my pleasure to invite you to make your remarks. <laughs>